to the home, I think. Say what you wanna say, I'm starting to feel like the one today. Yeah. No matter the number, you always remember the man in the 23. I guess I'm LeBron today, but sometimes I feel like I'm Jordan Gray. Hey. You should retire, cause I got the fire and you can get blown away. I hit the floor today, I dropped the money to the Lord and pray. Up in the mirror, just hoping and wishing that I'ma get done today. Yeah, you hear my songs, but wait, you're probably the one that ignored me. Wait, I'm on a mission and I'ma go get it. Yeah, I'ma be Jordan Gray. All I'm asking you to do is go hard, leave it all on the field. That's it. Because we can't get these days time. back. You can't That's be 12 it. again. You can't be 11 again. That's right it. Right now, while you, you out here seize the moment, it ain't about wh who can we... We could be anybody. That's it. It's about what we bring when we come to the table. While the majority of Newark's murders are drug or gang-related, what police call targeted killings, kids with bright futures claimed by streets that are becoming more dangerous every day. But, but how about the, the story behind it? Is anybody talking about why this is happening? When the fall, spring, summer, and all, you got a choice stay in the house or you can hop off the porch. My mom was only 15, lucky she ain't a boy. I'm from the south side of North, but still show love to the north. Yeah. Talking 280, the number blocks, pending in court. I'd probably be dead if it wasn't for sports. Uh, Coach Nas and I met in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. It was funny how we met because back then uh, we were actually uh, doing illegal things. <laughs> you know, we was doing bad things, so I told her, I said, look, uh, you know what? I'm gonna get your kid into private school. Um, and she might have thought I was playing. Um, the first big come up we had, moved out of our friends. Um, place and um, put a daughter in uh, private school, well, my daughter in private school. When we met, we were actually selling drugs at the time. Uh, we actually got involved, we ended up getting arrested. Um, I ended up going to jail for a year. Once things, it started spiraling downhill, but um, when she got incarcerated, I don't want I felt guilty, um, but it was, a, it was a team thing, so it was like, you know, it was part of the game. But my, my main thing was uh, just making sure the kids were straight, um, making sure the family was straight, a mom, a father. Um, I stuck it all the way out. But during the process of it, it was, you know, I didn't really have too much family here, and he had his dad, and they had the house, and it was, you know, at the time I was two kids in, and I was pregnant with Nassir Jr. Um, he actually had his father put his house up to get me, to bail me out. Rent was paid, kids went to school every day, kids, um, her mom played a big role, um, making sure that the clothes was clean, the food was on the table. I ended up going all the way, they shipped me all the way to Trenton to Bo Robinson and he made all the visits and made sure I had money on my books, brought the kids, you know. Um, I just had to bring the food in and mom was gonna make sure everything was good. She did a stint. Um, I made sure the kids visited her. We went to see her, made sure she had the money, answered all the phone calls, did everything. And um, I had, a, at that time, we found out that I had another kid, which is my, my other son, Amari. Uh, they three months apart. And I guess that kind of crushed the world. But I, like at the end of the day, I always told her, I said, look, um, I'm, when you get out, we're gonna get married. We're gonna um, do everything the right way. The, the process, he was, you know, he held it down for me when I was when I was down. Um, we ended, I ended up coming home, um, and he had a new apartment, you know, for for me to go to everything. You know, we mapped out. I think I came home in 2006, and we was just sitting on the porch one day, and you know, he was just like, "Let's get married," and I'm like, "Are you serious?" And from there, and we ended up having to do a counseling session before the preacher that married us, and he asked me the same question, and I. You know, it was, he was a, he was for me. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. 
is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. A brother told me, he said, look man, what you're doing is nice for those kids, but what you're doing on the a, on a flip side, you can't mix the two, it, it don't go. It's like oil and vinegar, you can't put them two together. When I say it first started, Rick City, we were we were homeless. I say had um he was working in Irvington uh, school sh school yeah he was working at school in Irvington and we were staying with a girlfriend of mine and I'm like you sure this is what we got the time to do this right now. A brother like Vernon he had a lady call me pray for me and um, just just like was like trust God and my father ended up passing away and when he passed away he left me some money. And when he left me the money, I knew, I knew I couldn't take that and um, flip it or do anything with it. I had enough at that time to probably be a kingpin. And I just believed in God and me and my family, we just lived off the money. And I, you know, I couldn't get a job at the time and I just lived off the money, continued to coach and my blessings just started coming from there. I'm Ari at Mary Games, wide receiver, linebacker, Brick Street Lions. My name is Nasha Gaines, and I play receiver. When it's a football game, oh gosh. <laughs> when it's a football game in the morning, it's, it's so intense. I mean, it's, it's gotten to the point now that I'm actually telling him to send me the tape on the other team because I'm watching film and I'm like, <laughs> you can say I'm a coach on the low. He, like, his heart, he, he, like, he goes out his way for uh, many of the people, not just his uh, son, his family. It's getting up in the morning, make sure the kids ate, make sure everybody got the equipment. Make sure whoever, because he got to pick up somebody. Somebody got to get picked up. It was something like, it was a long time ago. I was probably like five years old. It was like almost the whole team was spending at the house. They was playing around, pranking people. It was, it was, it was, it was a lot. I wish I witnessed it all. Or, and I probably have maybe five or six kids at the house, you know, spending the night. It's just, it's a, it's hectic. That's why I do what I do. Um, I give back so I'm able to be hands-on with people so they could feel my story instead of just hearing somebody telling them. Um, but if, if I could give any type of advice to somebody right now, I say, look, man, trust in God. Uh, go, go talk to somebody that's positive in your community that could probably put you on the right path. Because um, the street life, the gang life, those guys are really not there for you. they actually just using you. And if, and if, you know, I, I don't want to say if you ain't Pablo Escobar right now, just give it up. But I, even Pablo Escobar get his time too. So if you look at it, it's, it's not too many successful drug dealers or successful hustlers. They end up getting caught somehow or they ended up uh, having somebody uh, flip their mind to, you know, transition into a better way. So if you don't have that, if you're not that, listen, get your butt in school, um, do the right thing. Or if you pass the beyond the school part, man, get with you a pastor or a imam, um, somebody that's, that's that's tough in your community that can help you to get you on the um, the right path um, to doing something great. Rise up, my brother. Oh my brother, rise up, my brother. Away from your dreams, we need one another. Time to uplift our kings. When you down. One thing about Brick City, uh, we adamant about our kids staying involved with something. So my purpose was creating where you at and trying to build something for young men like yourselves to come back to and also voice, yo, where you going to other kids? Because again, we got kids in here that's going to Navy. We got kids going to Merrimack, we got kids going to Michigan, we got kids in here going to Stanford, okay, we got brothers in here in Yukon, 
We got a graduate from uh, Nuremberg College. <laughs> okay, it's not a game. So the difference is I didn't see that as a young lad. I didn't see you all as a young lad like these young brothers here. They get to see you guys. And that motivate that will motivate them to say, you know what? I don't need that out there. I don't need that out there. Because you know what? I see what this brother here Rashad is doing, or this brother Drew is doing, or what our man is doing. They going to places. And I want to be where they going. I don't want to be a dope dealer. You know, many kids in Pop Warner, not just in Brick City, um, and actually just throughout the city, but yeah, there are many kids that are uh, playing football on a Pop Warner level that are trying to juggle between football and gang life. You can see the most talented kid that's being pulled in another direction because friends or influences outside of football is pulling them in one direction. One thing I can, can say and what I've seen with Brick City Alliance, they fight back. Uh, Brick City Lions started uh, just a dream that we always dreamed about, just having our own program and being from Newark with it, um, producing on all levels and actually doing what we're doing now, putting up national championships, bringing them back to Newark. But uh, it was just a thought and a dream and now here it is, a reality. It started in um, 2012, uh, me, Coach Nas, a couple of other guys, Coach Jamal, I mean, we all we all bound together, and you know we 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 vowed to bring something better to our city. So what we did was we formed Brick City Lions off of having the North War Scorpions, and um, we just never looked back. I'm very proud of what Brick City Lions have accomplished so far. I mean, I've been there from day one. I've been there from since it was just you know a conversation. There was no question in my mind that one day we'll be great because we was we was also you know we was we was already some good coaches and every year you know what I'm saying we have mandatory uh, football clinics that we must attend which which empowers us to, and gives us the creativity that we take to our program so I, I mean it's 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 pretty good and within seven years I could see us being a real real big powerhouse man those uh, men and women that serve on the Brick City Lions that know where their kids come from, know their influences are out there, they actually give gang members a challenge. Bringing them back, showing them the opportunity, showing them how this vessel, uh, which is football, can lead to great opportunity. So in that aspect, yeah, I see them juggling it, but I just don't see them being as victorious. Since Brick City Lions started in 2012, um, I've seen uh, a very, very big difference um, in the program, how it's evolved. The Brick City Lion program is, is probably one of the biggest and strongest programs in the state of New Jersey. And with the vision and the coaches and the culture that they built, there are gonna be some amazing things happening with that program and in the next five years. Um, we had all those levels. Um, 25, between 26 to 30 kids per level. Now, I'm just vision this. 30 kids per level, all those different levels. So that's six levels, 30 kids per level, right? So to see from 2012 and now we at 2018 with two national championships on our belt, cheerleaders went third and fourth in the nation for the first time. Um, we're, we, 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 we're making some moves, man, and we're doing some really big things. Okay, go, sure. go. Oh. Yes, yes. We hot, 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 so my name is Mikey, I'm the president of Brook City. They meant everything. I'm trying to bring the beat back with you here. The girls have been working hard, practicing. Here we are. After Laura's beautiful presentation, giving back at Full Bank and um, Unlimited is going out and feeding the hungry down the North Penn Station. Giving back to the community. Led by Coach Jerm. You don't speak English. Oh. 
Okay. Mire, me dieron uno. Gracias. ¿Tú quieres uno para ti? Gracias. 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 Um, we just want to actually just welcome you on behalf of our councilmen here in Norfolk, New Jersey. Just pretty much just have this story brought to you to be able to give back. And let's just first just say, just say thank you. Thank you. Real loud. Thank you. Real loud. Thank you. That's what's up. We're going to really get into the spirit. Keep it a buck 2020 version here. We in the building. We got Coach Sheed. We got Team Do It. Spawn mm. Huggins. What's going on? We got Big Body Nas. Natty Nas. Two what times. They call you? <laughs> got the Godfather of New Jersey. I want to. Know, I want you to tell me. I want two things to know. Like, what was the craziest run? Who you ran over in the Big North that was like a statement? Like, I saw one, and I ain't gonna talk about because I love the kid that was on the other end of you, that. You was giving a lot of people some business, but just give me if you can give me two of them. Two of them. Just give me two. 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 All right, junior year. I remember a playoff game versus Bergen. I ran all. I ran. I think it was Jordan. Or Pearson, it might have been. Mm. It was like a 40, I think it was 40, Pearson. I Pearson, was Pearson yeah, right? It was like a forty-yard run. It was outside. It was an end around. I got it. Made one cut. I made Jordan miss, and then Pearson was right there. And I, I was about to yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, we we we're gonna be one of the top, if not the top, organization in North Jersey football, in New Jersey. Outside of, you know, a lot of the kids that's coming out of our programs, man, that's going to, to big, big, you know, schools, high schools and colleges and stuff like that, man. And some are seeping to the league now because they understand the process and they believe and, 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 and it's all because of, you know, what Brick City has bought, uh, what the brother Nasir has, the vision he's brought to the table. And um, I'm, I'm very proud and excited to be a part of this organization. First and foremost, I want to thank Nas you know, for all that he do. Um, I played for the North War Scorpions. Um, when I was in his age and when I was younger, we didn't have a program like this, but um, he did a lot for the, um, for the community. And I was one of those kids. Uh, I just needed a little extra push, you know, to really just get where, I, where I'm at now. And uh, he was one of those guys that gave that push. So I want to thank him. I'm going to present him with a jersey, my NFL jersey, a jersey that I played in this year um, from the New Orleans Saints. Now, Sid Gaines is a different type of person. You actually have to know him and feel him out. Um, the impact he made on my life is just something special because you know, meeting him kind of slowed me down, and you know, being being there for my son slowed me down from another life I was living, you know, out in the street. So um, I could say he kind of saved my life. Coach Nas to me, he is a he's just a great coach, a great influencer, a great role model to um, other kids, including me. Coach Coach Nas is like a father figure, and the impact he has on my game and like off the field is like just the motor the motivation to like to push to do something if you want to do it you should do it his his heart is big and he means nothing but the best for these kids and and that's what makes him you know the person he is so he's, he's a great guy i love y'all man and i know that y'all gonna enjoy it but be bigger than be bigger than the uniform okay Man, Nas to me is that that's 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 my big brother. Him in, his impact on the city. I can't even say the kids in North, the city, which is our kids, our youth, is just crazy because they know that he's not going to stare them wrong. He wants the best for whoever's in the situation that they can be in. Hey, me up, come out the game, brother. That's on you, not me. Hey. Hey, take Charlie, Charlie. No, Alabama, Alabama. Co Coach Nas, he's a little big bro. He's he's a good dude. I, I love him. You know, he he's the one that kept inspiring me to keep coming, keep showing up. I hear it, I believe it, I see it. But you know, when you got big time coaches calling his phone, asking him about 
what's, what's the deal with this kid, this kid, that kid. And it's like, you know, we little nobodies to some people, but to other people, we somebody. In this football world, like, man, he, 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 he the Duke. Coach Nas, he's like, I look, I look to him as like a father figure. He's like, he's my coach. He called me today, like, yo, what's up? Did you get, did you speak to them? I'm like, yeah, cause he's gonna call back. And he's like, what you doing tomorrow? I'm like, what you mean? He's like, work. I was like, yeah, I'm working. He was like, um, I wanted to do breakfast with you. I'm like, bro, I'll leave my job to come eat with you, man. They know your name up 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 at up the stadium at Met Life. You know what I mean? The minute they're gonna be like, um. This is not Sir Gaines guy, Nasir. Uh, somebody get some up here, please. I need to have a sit down with this guy, with this gentleman. You know. Yeah, he got a couple. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get the kids on the field. Check, check, check. Alabama, 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 Alabama. I'm here, go get him. Alabama, Alabama. Coach Nas, that's my brother, man. Um, we fight like cats and dogs, man. It's like day and night. You know what I'm saying? And. He get on my nerves, I get on his nerves, and that's what that's what brothers do. You know, we a, we a family, and if you're not challenging your brother, then I mean, what 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 good are you? I, I mean, how are you learning and stuff like that? So I, I I learn from him. You know, he take from me. Coach Nas is my big little brother. Coach Nas is like family to me. Uh, I watch my son. Anybody that knows Coach Nas. If your child is with him, your child is in good hands. He is like the best when it comes to kids. Coach Nas to me is like, he's like my mentor. He's a great influencer to me as a big city line. He's an amazing person. Coach Nas doesn't sleep. Coach Nas breathes, eats, sleeps. Everything is football and it's always about his team, his organization, how he can help the next person. Coach Nas, two-time Natty Champ, founder of the Brick City Lions, founder of the Game Changers, founder of the Big 21. Um, Nasir Gaines is my government, you know, been doing this for 16 years strong. I wanted to kind of give back. Um, I wanted to help some guys that, that was like me growing up. So once I had a couple dollars, I, I felt like I wanted to um, come back and um, buy uniforms and um, socks and helmets and things like that. And once I started buying the uniform, um, one of the coaches, a guy named Coach Ryan, asked me that I wanted uh, one of the coach. And I, from that day on, I just I just dove head first. Oh man, um, I've been coaching 14 years now. Why not be perfect? Why not finish perfect today? No water boys are gonna be allowed. Yeah, I know that. We're 14 and 0. Be strong and finish in 15. Now we can talk about our record, because we're here. And we can talk about winning the national championship, because we're here. My name is Jalen Klein, a.k.a. Speedy. I play for the Brick City Lions, and I play running back and linebacker. My name is Jalen McLean. I play receiver in DB, and I play for the Brick City Lions. My name is Makai Jones. I play running back and defensive back for the Brick City Lions. My name is Tyler Sanders. Um, I play running back and linebacker for the Brick City Lions in New Jersey. My name is Jalen Bell. I play cornerback for the Brick City Lions. My name is Malachi Lewis. I play for the Brick City Lions. And I play quarterback. Brick City Lions! Huh? Brick City Lions! Y'all yeah. trap! Who? It's Neo! Oh, yes, sir. Just Dio. saying names? Neo run this! Neo run this! I want Nate Train. Who you? My name Train. Who? You talk all that smack, but can't back it up. What? Y'all want who? Yeah. Oh, hi. Hit, 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 hit that problem. Just hang on. Just hang on. Just hang on. Hold up, hold up. Look, 
It's time to remind the game that most of these niggas is kind of way. I'ma be quiet, the industry wild, I don't wanna die today. I'm feeling like fire today, I'm about to go get me a hideaway. Sound like a fire decay. Say what you wanna say, I'm starting to feel like the one today. No matter the number, you always remember the meaning of 23. I just show him. Get across the board. Watch the work. Watch the work. Watch the work. Let's go to 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 work. That's what my mama said. Look, hey, look, mama said there be days like this. Never knew I have a wave like this. White man got his cane. Here we go. Yeah, we got the I've seen it all before, done it all before. How the fuck I'm supposed to raise my kids when they got me in a maze like this? Like this? Facts. Say what you wanna say. I'm starting to feel like the one today. No matter the number, you always remember the meaning of 23. This uh, this uh, fake 28. We best friend love. Put a TNT at. Put a TNT at. You can get blown away. Good, good morning, good morning, good morning. All the campers, all the campers, if you have a black shirt on, black, white shirt on, if we can start the move over here, right in the center. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Special day for us, for the city. You know, we got Al Qadim Muhammad for the New Orleans Saints. Had this kid when he was a baby. For him to be doing his first annual camp here is a, is a blessing. How you feel about this, brother, man? You have done had two. Successful uh, uh, camps coming through your yeah. beautiful city of North. How you feel about this, man? It's great, man. It gives young people an opportunity to network with each other. That's number one. Fellowship. That's more important than anything to me, man. Guys, fellowship with each other. See that there's other people out here competing uh, and wanting the same thing they want. A lot of times, our young people are surrounded by other folks that don't have the same positive interests or goals that they have. And, for them to see all of these other people that have the same goals in mind, uh, it's good for them. It makes them understand that they're on the right path. My name is Aquadine Muhammad. I'm having a camp for the kids. I'm giving back. We're in Newark, New Jersey. That's where I'm from, Brick City, baby. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, just, it's a great moment. I feel good to just come back and give back to the kids. The kids out here working hard. And um, you know, a lot of people talk about the neg negative that going in Newark, New Jersey. But well, we doing something positive. Well, no, because you know we always been what it was. You know what I mean. We just need the opportunity, the resources, the focus. As long as you have some committed adults, put these young people and direct them in the right area, they're gonna be okay. They have what they they have what they need. You know. I want everybody now. I want everybody. One shot. One shot. Two shot. Two shot. Somebody to me. How you feel? How you feel? All right, look, we're gonna have a good day today, but first I want to start this out. This camp is not about me. This camp is about you guys. Coming from no, you know, it's it, it's tough. It's tough to make it out, and a lot of people tell us we can't do this, we can't do that. Well, I'm here to tell you it's possible. Anything is possible. Any of y'all can be whatever y'all want to be, whether it's football, basketball, a lawyer, an officer, whatever y'all want to be, y'all can be that. You know what I'm saying? As long as you put your uh, mind to it. Keith Miles, I'm 15, and I um, play for Brick City, and now I'm about to go to St. Petersburg. To be an eighth grader, uh, coming out of Brick City Lines. With how many uh, uh, college, scholar, college scholarships you got? Six. You have six. Man, it's Michigan, UNC, Rutgers, Baylor, and uh, NC State. NC State, yes sir. What we have here is uh, Jalen Berger, uh, All-American running back at Don Bosco Prep. This is sophomore year. Let's talk about uh, how many offers you have about right now. Uh, 24. 24 offers. And what's some of your offers that you have right now? Uh, Alabama, Ohio State, University of Florida, Virginia Tech, Rutgers, Syracuse. We could go on and on. You know, this guy here, he started with, from the mud. 
He's from North. We work all week for this day. Yes, sir. Let's go out there and lay it on the line, yes, sir. sir. Hey, play for each other. Give it all you got. Let's go out here and get it. Let's destroy their season. Let's have fun doing it. Hey, come on, baby. Right on three. One, two, three. Right. Tahir Whitehead, linebacker with the Oakland Raiders. You know, just out here supporting my brother Al Dean today. You know, he's doing a great thing out here in North, giving his uh, first annual football, youth football camp. Like, you know, he's like a little brother to me. I, you know, been in the league now for seven years. And when he got drafted, I just, you know, tried to show him the ropes, teach him, you know, how, how it's done. And, you know, and he just hit the ground running. You know, he, he had a plan. He had a goal where he was trying to get accomplished. And, you know, he's achieving that. How you doing? I'm Prince Stewart. We out here at Al Qadim Muhammad, first annual 2018 youth summer camp. We got high school over here. They're doing some great individual drills. We got the youth over here doing some great individual drills. I can see it as clear as the summer's day. Damn, I can feel it. It's standing right next to me. Okay, now the time is right. Let it wash over me uh, The spirit of a champion I gotta let the shit run free Is it wrong that I gotta feel pain To believe that it's real We the princess of this battlefield I surrender call our king I ain't got a dream Yeah Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I, I really like love my mom. It's like when I'm running for a touchdown, it's like I think about my mom because I know she put in work for me every single day. I know she do this for me. So it's like every time I'm running, it's like I do this for her. I'm Dal Klein, AKA Wu. My son is Jalen Klein, Speedy. Me and my wife Tiffany been married for six years, 2012. Me and Tiffany, my wife, we met at the skating ring 20 something years ago. When I was first diagnosed with lupus, I was diagnosed with SLE. As time has passed, I'm now diagnosed with SLE and SLT. So I have lupus of my organs and lupus of the blood, along with fibromyalgia. I go through aches and pains. Uh, I also go through different parts of my organs where I have to get several tests for and I get blood tests every three months to make sure my lupus levels are normal and not high. I, I didn't want it to affect me, so I really tried to not to think about it. So I just know I had to do like good in the classroom, good in the sports, because I know one day like she won't be there for me. So like I gotta make it the best for her. When, she, when my wife first got diagnosed with lupus, I didn't, it hurt me just as bad as it hurt her, because I'm looking like, I didn't even know what lupus was. So I'm in my mind, I'm like, what is lupus? I, I, don't, I don't, I had to look it up, research it understand what it was but it, in the inside it was killing me because i didn't know what was going on with her it depends on which part is affected if it's affecting any of my organs i could be in the hospital for up to a week if it's because of the medication that flared me up it could be for a week up to two weeks depending on how long my body is reacting to what they're giving me. Well, the things I felt that I had to do was I first, I had to be there for her, mentally, physically, emotionally, because I know what she was going through. I seen it in her, she a whole change. She did a whole 360. Had to be there for the kids, make sure they was all right when she wasn't doing all right, practice when she couldn't get up. But as far as that, I was, I was there for her, all the 100%. I used to get the um, the symptoms where you feel like pins and needles are going up your arm and you can't move or you can't in your my arms and my legs. So sometimes you know you go to work and you can't walk across the street to get to the other side. Um, 
but then I try not to take too much medicine, right. medication, and that's why I said I have to get in tune with my body, right. and that was the problem. Right. You have to pretty much detox and get rid of all the bad stuff that we've been eating over the years yeah. because yeah. we have been. Mm -hmm. And once you detox, then you rejuvenate your body with things that your body needs, like the greens. And so I was taking supplements for many years, changed the way I was eating the rice, changed it to brown rice, no. Um, the bread, the yeast and bread is oh, horrible. I love bread. And <laughs> That's my biggest thing. The Gluten. bread. Oh I know. my God, I right. love bread. Yeah. Well, they say you go to the farmer's market and you get the bread with less sugar. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you get that bread, then it shouldn't. But then once you get to know your body, you'll, after you detox and you get rid of all the bad stuff right. and then you rejuvenate and you start feeling good, once you get back into that mold again, you know what you need to do to get yourself back right. As I've taken myself off the medication, now I'm basically uh, high protein, high fats. Um, I limit myself to snacks and carbs, more water in my diet, and I notice that now my lupus is pretty much under control. But when she made the change of, from going from the medicine then just the straight off of it, I see a totally difference. Like helps out, she not drag, draggy no more. Like every day, like this football season, like she was always there. Like after we win every game, she like give me a hug and like it'll feel good because I know she, like last year, she could barely do those things. I'm fine, um, to me I'm fine. Let the doctors tell it I'm fighting a disease that they think may be possibly a liver disease. Um, my numbers are actually high. I haven't shared it with too many people, just my immediate family. Not even my kids know, um, but I just put my faith in God and go from there. Oh man, I've been at Mary P. Well, I've been there for six years, it was at a school called Visions, then they merged with Marion P. Thomas. For the total time I've been there, six going on seven years. And um, my last days coming there, I, I knew it was coming down to it. Uh, you know, they wanted to make cutbacks and things like that, which was okay. But I knew it would will, it will hurt, not just me, but the building and the village. Um, I was a big part to the school, not just, just one school building, but to the whole village. Um, I went way above and beyond for those kids. I made sure those kids were safe, had a uh, safe learning environment. Um, nobody was being bullied on my watch. And I think they kind of knew that. Um, you could see when it was coming to a close on my last day that the kids just didn't want to let me go. Um, some kids might have been fearing for like the safety of the learning. I mean, you know, them learning in the building. Um, not being bullied, not being picked on. And um, that don't kill me, man. I, I love those kids, man. You know, um, I put a lot of time in them. I stayed with them from like 7.30 in the morning to six o'clock at night, every day, every day. Uh, some of them, I'm the first one that, you know, threw a ball to them, you know? They taught them how to catch a pass or throw a ball or hold the pencil, um, you know, cause I deal with a lot of the kindergarten kids all the way up and um, that's one school bus. see I get I get attached to the the kids not just to the kids but the uh, to the staff to the to the village um, that's me like I, I worked there so I, I treated everybody like family every teacher was like my sister or brother um, the principal was definitely like my big brother um, he looked out for me you know and I made sure that his building ran right and I was just a security guard in the school building. So if the impact that a security guard can give you, you know, that's the same as the custodian and the next man, the next man. That's why I always say it takes a village. So I was just one fourth of it all. But um, yeah, man, I miss those kids. One day I'm gonna stop by and go see them, but um, I gotta move on now. I know that it's a, it is a business, it's a job. So, you know, at the end of the day, I gotta pick myself up and get back going. Oh man, when I walked in that room, uh, a lady named Miss uh, Michelle Griffin uh, and Miss G, they, they, they set me up with a surprise, told me to come up to the third floor, they had something for me. And I got to the third floor. Okay. Coach Nas, on behalf of the Select Academy, 
and the village. We want to thank you for your commitment to our scholars. Obviously, I can't talk. Obviously, you touched their lives, and they just wanted to say that they appreciate you so much. That it just broke me down um, to see them there and watching them cry and me crying. It was just like a. Uh, <laughs> It was sad, it was a real sad day. Um, not just for me, but for everybody. Even my family, my kids. Uh, my kids is a, a custom to going there and seeing the kids and we we build relationships with them. Like we, birthdays come, like I'm buying birthday gifts for everybody in the school. My presence in the school building as if their father was there. And I think a lot of the kids in the school love me so much because they was missing fathers at home and I gave them the fatherly love. And tonight, and tonight we are here, to, we're here. Where I'm leading that? If you leading, it's for life. I have a dream. We got the mills up. Nothing negative don't concern me In your words they won't hurt me Just follow us to an uplifting journey True power what we show You gon' learn see Dude's got all the degrees to help the youth breathe Breathe in deep and wait to exhale slowly Keep on rising to the top Reach each one teach one homie Apostle stop dawdling Grown up should not need coddling When I hit the throttle hurry up and keep following Who's hollering? Come wild with us we role modeling Saving our kids in the village just how we dropping in the problem is you don't believe or seek knowledge that's why we come back around to teach the class again <laughs> Lions. I won a national championship last year for the Pee Wee team. I'm going to JV next year. So right now on this all season I'm training with Coach Reggie as a running back position as a running back position coach to get better season. In the college and get an education, a chance to even get it into uh, some money out of it. Maybe a partial scholarship, full scholarship. I mean that's just that's amazing. You know, just it's a game and the fact that the game allows you to, to, to set your future up like that, I mean it's just uh, an amazing experience. Every, every time I recruit a kid, I always talk about the blessing that it is to get recruited by a university. What, what you hear the game changes the game, um, and what inspired you to do what you do in terms of training these young men? I mean, for me, obviously, just to support my athletes today. Um, I have about five athletes here today. I really just wanted to show them that it's more than obviously just training. That obviously, I want to obviously see them succeed. It's lack of communication. The old heads feel like the youth is not listening. But the reality is they actually wait for you to tell us No good, we know better. Some pay homage to knowledge. They say the kids, it takes dollars and a village that box. Come follow me. We got one there. Let's go, man. Everybody that want to play football, you're preparing for that day to be evaluated, to be in front of coaches, to do your best. And the only way you can do your best is by giving your best, all right? Prior to that game a year ago, I had the same, I had the same uh, team. We were Junior Pee Wee. And we made it to that same game a year ago, and um, we, we lost to the DC team called War Five. They beat us. They beat us pretty good, actually, uh, 25 nothing. And it left a sour taste, not just in my mouth, but in the kids' mouth. Um, we lost to War Five, a uh, team from Washington uh, DC. We won all last season. Like we was winning, 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 and just to come and then like uh, lose the way we did, it was just it was heartbreaking. And that next year we came back. We grind. We put a grind together. Fellas, we've been here before. We've been here before. Remember that. Remember that feeling. Remember the way it felt when that game was over. That's the way you start the game. That's the way you start the game. By halftime, your parents should be broken in play. By halftime. Entering that uh that Eastern Regional game, 
It was just about uh, the kids had their own little mindset. They had the things that uh, we won't repeat, not repeat, do not repeat. And I didn't understand what they were saying. They was like, do not repeat. Do not repeat the same thing we did a year ago. And um, you could see their energy from that point on. Um, we went out from the rip. We just uh, we just punched them right in their face and um, ended it at halftime, believe it or not. Put that one finger up to put that sin button. <laughs> I gave them six so they wouldn't go home with nothing. You know, I gotta feed the boys. They came all the way to North to get this whooping. You know what I'm saying? So I had to, I had to give them something. They gotta, they got, they gotta go home with something. You know what I'm saying? I, no donuts today. Dunkin' Donuts was out of service. You know, we've been giving them out all year. So I gave them a little something. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. But guess what? Me and my soldiers going to Disney. I can remember, I think, Unlimited when, when Unlimited went the very first time. I think Nasir went, yeah, Nasir went, I didn't go. And I think they lost the first game. Once you lose the first game, it's like, it's over, we on vacation. Your gut is like, you know, cause it's like, damn, we got here and we already shut down already, you know? So to see the faces, you know, it's, it's hard to see the faces and to see the hurt in them. But then it's like, you know, I've seen them like, okay, well we got here. And it's like, okay, we, we done hit one step. We, we got this far, okay, next year we gotta go harder. It wasn't my first time going to Florida. I've been down there once before, 2015, with another great team. And um, we came up short, we lost our first game. Um, which we lost to the, the team who actually won the, um, the national, I believe that year. But. We lost the first game, so you know we won the second game, the cancellation game. But it was it was a feeling like I knew that we got there again, that we kind of beat the competition that was down there. Last season, we went uh, all the way up and we didn't make it. We lost to a team at uh, War Five, and I knew this time it was our turn. It's my favorite week of the year. You know, we call college football games all year long, which is great. But boy, when I get here, Super Bowl week, I love it. It's football at its finest. The joy, the passion of these young kids, it, it brings me back to when I started football. I love it. Uh, Florida, man, anytime you, you have opportunity to win the Eastern Regional Championship, and have an opportunity to complete, um, to compete in uh, Florida, Disney World, ESPN, Worldwide of Sports, it's priceless. We were getting ready to go this year and the kids had to fill out a paper. It was the last game. And they had to fill out these papers and it said, I think Nas had to name something that he's done. And he said, I always made it to regional, but I never won a championship. Brick City is two for two. They're actually going for three for three. Yeah. Um, so we've had some pretty strong showings from some of these teams as well. Get down to this time, with this 2018 Pee Wee team, it was, it was, it was like, it was go hard or go home. So um, we kind of went in with the, we ain't come here for nothing. Just strictly business and we came and died the, 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 the winner's whole thing. And I wasn't leaving out until seven o'clock that night. So I'm trying to pack and I'm watching the game and I'm screaming, I'm like, Lord Jesus, I hope they win. I can't, I can't get off this flight. I'm not trying to go down here to a bunch of sad faces. Like that's the worst feeling ever. We were watching the, uh, the the select show on ESPN, and um, I never forget they uh, showed up. We drew the uh, the Southeast region from the from the rip. Now Southeast region normally is teams that come out of Florida, so we looked the team up. The team played in the national championship the year before that, which was the Creek Outlaws um, from from Jacksonville. And every year I've been there, the first round I had a team from Florida, and I I, I end up losing. Every time, I never won a first game there. So to come back with this group right here, we had to make sure that these kids was focused. After we ended up beating the Creek Outlaws, we had to face a team in the second round from uh, North Carolina called the North Raleigh Bulldogs. By this time, I knew that it was tough. We had to play uh, three games in one week. 
So we end up ice bathing the kids. Uh, but we got the brothers in here in the ice bath. He got real with it. He's not serious. We love keeping the fuck. We got the brother M. Jones, Makai Jones. We got the receiver over here. Some memorable moments was in Florida, like taking ice baths. That was fun, you know, because the teammates were there. It's like helping you take ice bath if like it's your first time or your second time. It was whatever. It was just like having fun with your teammates going out. Shout out to our parents. They was involved, making sure the kids they focus, watch film. And uh, we ended up beating North Rally Bulldogs 29 to nothing to advance to the uh, 62nd uh, Pop Warner Super Bowl in Orlando. We end up advancing to play the Rancho Cucamongos. <laughs> Rancho Cucamongos from uh, California. I used to think that was a made up uh, town, but they're real. And um, these guys was for real. They had a kid named uh, Hype Grand, the quarterback. He was a big time kid out in California. I looked him up afterwards, but uh, we saw him and we knew we had to get after him. We knew that. We knew if that kid got loose, it could be trouble. One shot, one shot, one shot, one shot. One shot. They had big receivers and um, just by watching film and watching film with the kids, uh, we were all locked in. And then we started taking their weight from uh, what they were doing, their weakness. And um, once we saw their weakness and our strength, we put our strength to their weakness. A look at a few highlights and there's a lot of them for Brick City in this game and most of them come when they're on defense and here's early in the game the the key pick that got the game started that was uh, Marquise Diggs the safety number nine and then they hand the ball off to Adonis White getting first points on the board and coach how about Jalen Klein what a performance he had in this one using his speed they call him speedy for a reason yeah and both those running backs had big games a eh? in the offensive line I mean just the execution was outstanding but this is where they were so tough here's the one big play that the Cougars got all day long and that was a big one and a good one right before the half and then the dominating performance continued for the Lions in the second half. White, his second touchdown, and that'll do it. 26-8. to eight. Brick City doing their thing on defense, not giving Hype Grant in that offense an inch to move the ball. They'll take their championship trophy up to Newark. Even with the minute left on the clock, uh, still beating them with 20, 26 to 8, 20 seconds. I, I wanted to see the clock say zero, zero. It was an ama amazing feeling. Um, I had confidence in the team. I had confidence in Coach Nas. Coach Nas reiterated several times, we didn't come this far to come this far. And I knew we were officially national champs. I knew uh, it's tough, man, coming into that. We saw we saw our team, uh, our brothers, uh, lose a couple years ago in 2015. They had a Pee Wee team that actually went to the finals. And that was just my motto to them. Uh, look, man, you want to be remembered. It's about legacy. Um, they'll never remember you if you lose this game right here. Because we had somebody come here before that lost the same game. And you can't duplicate what somebody else just did. You have to be the first to do it. And... I guess they took my energy and ran with it because I've never seen them play like that in my life. What's going through my mind is they about to be national champions. I never, I never experienced it, he never experienced it, so it was a, the best experience of my life and his life. It was a great film. Well, it feels good because I know that you know, the kids can get this opportunity. And like, I know like Coach Dobbs is like, we gotta do it for the people at home. So it's like, it feels good to be a national champ. My mother, because she came over to me, she said, we finally national tips and we did it. Seeing everything, like it was honestly real. And watching all the kids be happy, watching my son be happy, and 
he doesn't show that he's happy if you know my son he doesn't show emotions too much he's just like yeah okay well this is what i've been doing but it's a great feeling overall it was funny and it was exciting because i was able to compete for i was able my senior was able to continue and go against more competition i actually was sitting in a chair and um a notification came across my phone via Facebook. Uh, I think it came through from um, either Coach Niles or Coach Lewis. Um, and it was a picture of, of the team and um, stating that they that the two teams had won the, the Nationals down in Florida. Wow, Brick City. <laughs> you know, they were a good, they were good club, but you know, you guys are, are a phenomenal team. Tell us a little bit about this. Hey, Byron. Well, we have a, we, okay, this is our third time coming down here. Yep. The first two times, we didn't get out of the quarters. Yep. So we figured like the third time down, we was going to leave it all on the line. We was going to come out here with nothing but a national title. And our, besides our peewees, our little, our little brothers took the, the first one, and they set the table, and we could not let those guys down without bringing this thing back home. They gave you the inspiration. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Lead the deal. Yeah. Yes, they did. You know, today, Coach, you're, for all you did on offense, your defense was ball hawking all day long. Yes, Fantastic. yes. I can't, I can't give them more. Like, I, can't, I can't talk about them enough. Uh, defense has been, once we got to Florida, we know that offense is okay. But defense was gonna get us this absolutely, right here, absolutely. and I, I and I got a I got a second year guy. I mean, first year. As a matter of fact, first year with the program. He's a young guy. He came to the park looking for a job, and I gave it to him. And the rest, they say, is history. That's it. That's it. Good yeah. defensive coaching. They Thank were ready you. to roll. That Thank was you. fantastic. Thank you. What do you say about you know you you had some challenges as the whole uh, uh, association in trying to get folks down here, but yes. man, people came through for you. Yes, yes. I want. I definitely want to acknowledge anybody and everybody that helped us get down and, and, and you know what by the grace of God we got down here and we was not going to let that go to waste we came down here with a purpose to win this thing right here I tell you when you bring this back there's gonna be a lot of joy in Brick City yes that's it for is sure. yes it is and that's what we aim to do that's just what we aim to do and we thank you and uh, we thanks for you for you guys for even taking the time out to talk to us well you guys at this point if I'm fumbling over my words it's just that I'm that's so happy okay. right That's now. okay. When you're that happy, Coach, it's hard to find the yes, words. Yes, sir. Good yes, job, sir. buddy. You Thank did you. a nice job. Thank you, man. Congrats. Coach, Brick City, national champs. Yes. Got to feel great. And this is your first championship, first right? First time ever. 14 <laughs> years I've been waiting for this. Wow. This moment. Put a lot of work into this, buddy. Yes. Kids been um, putting in work since March. Last year, a year ago, we lost to the uh, War 5 team. And uh, we've just been on the Avengers ever since. You know, it was interesting. As much as your offense was superb, your defense yes, was they, rock solid. You collapsed the pocket on their quarterback. And that was a good quarterback. Yes, we got we got strong up front. Um, my ends are really fast. They get to the ball. We, we we knew we had to get to the quarterback to apply pressure because the receivers they can make plays. So we had to get to them before they get to the ball to the receivers. What did you tell your guys when they kind of came out smoking a little bit? They had that one good pass for a TD, and then they had the two point extra point. What did you tell your guys? Settle down. Settle down. We've been here before. Settle down and, and you know do do what you was told. That's part of this. Yes. With all, everything that's going on here, all the all the activities and things, trying to get the kids just to focus. That's my motto. It's like do do what I told you, not what you want to do. And yeah. if you do what I told you and it go wrong, then I could blame myself. But when you do something wrong, I'm on you. Yeah. yeah well, they need that, and yeah. that's good mentoring as well. Yes. So yes. I love. You got a lot of great support from uh, home family. Yes. Back at home in Jersey and North. They all supporting us. They be rooting for us. It's so big right now. Shout out to the city, uh, the mayor Raz Baraka, and everybody at home. Thank you for all your support, and uh, we bringing this home to City Hall. And you know what? It made me feel good. It made me feel hopeful. It made me feel that the young men that were there, it actually opened their eyes to their future. You know, when you're a champion, you get to hold up the Lombardi Trophy. Right in the NFL, and the mayor wanted to make sure you had your own Lombardi trophy and that you had your own. And so he got you your own championship rings and he got you your very own Lombardi trophy. Right, you're a human being born a, a man, and there are things that you're supposed to do as a man, right? Uh, the, the, the sport doesn't become you, right? You make the sport, and so I expect you to perform great, to think great. 
and be great no matter what's in your way. Always be great. And don't let nobody drag you down to be anything other than what you were created to be. And that is to be great, right? You guys are the ones that they're talking about. You played on ESPN. Not once, but twice in one season. That was great. It aired nationally. The world know you now. You got to carry yourself like that. When you go to school, you got to mean it. You got to mean it like you attack that hill, like we attack Weekway Park. You got to mean it. Because it's student first, then it's athlete. Parents, y'all put your hands together. Make some noise for these kids. They did a great job. So proud of them. Everybody in the building clapping up all the way upstairs. They clapping up for you in the law department. They clapping up for you everywhere. Uh, our work ethic is what really made us number one in the country. Football has been his life, actually, since the age of five. He's loved it. Um, he's actually made me learn a little bit more about it. I'm not a person that's into sports, but seeing how much he loves the game, I'm more involved in everything that he does. Oh, man, big things for Brick City Lions. The next five years, I, I actually see, like, you know, I, I want to be like Friday night tykes. Like, I don't think they can beat us. I, I wanted to teach, we, I, wanted, I wanted to showcase the world Brick City Lion football. Within five years from now, I see us in our own facility. Our Brick City Lions gear here on the walls or whatever like that, trophies, plaques, everything in one area so that way people can come see our display of what we have done throughout the years. The Brick City Lion program is, is probably one of the biggest and strongest programs in the state of New Jersey. And with the vision and the coaches and the culture that they built, there are going to be some amazing things happening with that program and in the next five years. Uh, next five years, hopefully, um, out to college, good grades, out to a good football school. Yeah, it's all up to God from now. Five years from now, I'm going to be in college. I'm going to get a, going to be in a D1 school, and I'm going to make it to the league. Next year, I'll be at Tennessee Hall Prep, playing sports, other athletics. And uh, hopefully in five years, I'll be at a Division I school, playing football, tr track, basketball, whatever it may be. Five years, I believe I'll be a, uh, a D1 football player, uh, a high level, and I believe I will go to the NFL. In the next five years, I'll be committing to a D1 college of my choice in the All-American game. Five years, I will be committing to a D1 college. Uh, five years, from five years from now, uh, I see myself um, at a Division I college, I'll be playing for like one of the top uh, colleges in the country and I'll be, I'll still be pursuing my dreams. In the next five years, I will be at LSU, Univers LSU, Louisiana State University, playing, starting as a cornerback. Mark my words, like, mark this date right now. Teams out there in the Nationals, claiming they, they rank one, two, and three. Watch out for them Brick City Lion boys and Jersey boys coming at you. You know, let them see it. Let them, let them see the program. Let them see how we came from this end to this end of the program, you know, and have a facility, have somebody care, you know, throw us a ticket tape parade or two every time we bring that thing home. I got every last kid that I'm a good All my daughters, all my kids, everything. Actually, yo, the water just flew off me because I'm hot from all the sun I'm about to get Talk to us nice, but things right. Always, baby, boy.
We came from D2 a year ago at Pee Wee and to come up at JV D1 and be the Far West team that went to the finals a year ago was impressive. You know, they believe in what we tell them, man. We've been watching film for two days. We actually had like games when they played their championships, so we knew how disciplined they were. We have a great team, man. We just we just represent for New Jersey, our state. We're gonna stay home, we're building our kids up. Um, I'm trying to get my kids to stay home and go to Rutgers. This year, Brick City Lions will be leaving North Jersey, Pop Warner, and we're starting our own uh, league, the Big 21 United Youth Football and Cheer. What we'll be doing is having 21 teams from 21 different counties in the state of New Jersey. From from now, I know we, I know we leaving the Pop One circuit, and move to the Big 21, which should be a, a a big adventure for us. You know, what I'm saying to play all of the top teams, or you know, what I'm saying the the mid level teams from the state of New Jersey. We'll be able to finally play uh, different guys where. Normally, when you're in those leagues, you have different restrictions. So what this league brings to you is no restrictions. So we'll be playing from the top of New Jersey to the bottom of New Jersey. And uh, we'll finally get a true champion coming out. Not only a true champion, but the kids will be able to be developed and uh, we can kind of start keeping the kids home. That's, what, uh, you know, that's all I can say. I'm a two-time national champ. You know what I'm saying? I don't know too many, too many coaches other than Coach Niles that did it. You know what I'm saying? We did it together. So, you know, we, we did it two times together, and hopefully we, we got more to do. Brick City is an excellent program. Uh, education first. They'll instill that into you. You have the coaches going to your school, and I believe that this will follow them wherever they go. They, they keep in contact with you just to make sure you're doing right. So five years from now, who knows? Coach Nas may be with my son. Um, on his way to college. Coach Nas may be that guy. Coach Nas may be that guy that might be an NFL coach one day. You never know. He's a great guy. It's a great organization. Once you come, you're family. You're like stuck in. My name is Rasheen Peppers. My son Yasin Peppers is a Brick City Lion. So my name is Aisha. My son is Omari Gaines, and he's a Brick City Lion. Coach Perk. Coach defense, offense, coach all of all around coach. I'm a Brick City Lion. My son is Jalen Klein, aka Speedy, and he's a Brick City Lion. I'm Burke, the enforcer, and I'm a Brick City Lion. Coach Mark, defensive coordinator, I'm a Brick City Lion. Damon Harrison, I'm a Brick City Lion. Tiffany Klein, team mom for JV Brick City Lions football, and I'm a Brick City Lion. My name is Makai Jones. I'm a defensive back, and I'm a Brick City Lion. This is Abdul Rashad Kirkland, a.k.a. Coach Ab, a.k.a. Go Run. I coach for the mighty, mighty Brick City Lions. I'm a Brick City Lion. I'm Jalen McLean. I'm a receiver in DB, and I'm a Brick City Lion. My name is Jalen Bell. I play cornerback, and I'm a Brick City Lion. My name is Kyle Sanders. I play running back and linebacker. And I'm a Brick City Lion. My name's Bubba. I play quarterback. I'm a Brick City Lion. My name is Jalen Klein, aka Speedy. I play running back and linebacker. And I'm a Brick City Lion. My name is Shakia Gaines. I'm the wife of Nasir, Coach Nas. And we are Brick City Lions. Nasir Gaines, Coach Nas. Natty Nas, two times. Big body underscore Nas. I'm a Brick City Lion. They coming home. There's no need for them to be there. We're gonna do what we gotta do. Play hard, we got another shot at. We just gotta take the long right, but there ain't no better feeling. Alright? This went all the game long. This was for our team mom. Team mom, Coach Jeff, this is your baby.